Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, Linux Mint 19.2 is officially out. It's been released on uh, Friday, and uh, we have some installation um, and upgrading tips here. And uh, what we're going to do is walk through what those are. Now, you can get to the how to upgrade right from their Linux Mint homepage as of right now. Of course, in a few days, this link may move. But if you want to figure out how to upgrade, it's very simple. Linux Mint has always had an easy upgrade path. They've added a few different things in here that they haven't in the past. Now, the first is, of course, since they are using Time Shift, you want to create a system snapshot. Now, I'm going to say there's two things you could do here. Um, time Shift is basically like the old Windows Restore. It backs up all of the operating system, but not the individual um, files. And so you can do that. With Linux, though, it's so easy to just create a new Linux and then just install your um, home folder back, <laughs> especially if you're going from the same same operating system, desktop environment, etc. So you can either do the time shift or just make a copy of your, your home directory. Now, if you have tons and tons of files, that may not be a viable option. Um, we are not going to do the time shift on the sample here simply because my virtual machine does not have enough space. The time shift wants 20 gigabytes to work. I have five gigabytes of free space. Hopefully the upgrade runs, but we'll see. But uh, if it is like your only only system, only computer, I would recommend making that time shift since I have multiple computers here. It's not a huge concern for me. Um, and it's easier to set up a Linux from scratch than it is to um, uh, try and restore a time shift if, uh, uh, if you don't know exactly what you're doing already. So, you know, that's kind of my thoughts, uh, but as a recommendation, so I will definitely tell you that. You want to make sure your screensaver is disabled because if the screensaver kicks on in the middle of the update, it might, uh, might mess things up. They do have a fix for that that they have down below. Um, you want to upgrade your cinnamon spices, etc. Uh, prior to the updates as well. I don't have any of those that I know of, but we'll go ahead and look at that. And then we're going to come into our software center under edit. There's an upgrade. Now, this may not be there. I'm going to show you how to make that occur. And then once you're done there, uh, you can actually remove new applications. There's X screen data. So you can run this line here to remove several things that are not, not um, actually used in the new Linux Mint 19.2. So make sure you do that. And uh, there's also... Uh, some new applications, so PK, uh, P7-zip, excuse me, and um, what is this? I don't know what the uh, extension lighting, uh, lightning is, uh, but those are um, new packages that are available, and then you, of course, need to reboot the system. So with that being said, um, what we're going to do is let's boot up my Linux Mint. Hopefully, we don't mess it up because this is actually one I, I do a little bit of uh, work, and actually, my GNU cache tutorials are over here, too, so... We'll see what happens. All right, so now we are booted into our login screen. I'm going to enter my super secret password that is definitely not mint. And we are going to get launched into our desktop. Of course, uh, this is the machine that I've done quite a bit of work on from time to time. So there's the theming is not stock. Really nothing on this is really stock. I use this Linux Mint build to uh, demonstrate a lot of things. All right, so here we are on Linux Mint. So, of course, one of the first things we want to do is um, you want to make sure that you have a backup of your files. So, several different ways. I always do manual backups. So, in your main home directory, hold Control, hit H. This is going to show all of your hidden files, or you can find them under View, under Show, and Hide Hidden Files. If you make a copy of pretty much everything that's in here, it is a lot of uh, it is a lot of, of data, but it is going to back up all of your files, all of your data, and all of your application settings. This is one of these great things about Linux is if you're used to Windows and you had to reinstall Windows and you got to reinstall your applications and you got to reinstall everything, including all of the any customizations, any shortcuts you did. Well, all of your shortcuts, hotkeys, in this case, even, you know, Thunderbird email lists, Thunderbird emails, evolution stuff, the configurations, the small system tweaks, they are all stored here. And so if you make a copy of this and then redrop this folder back on, that's going to work. Um, 
You also though, what they're gonna recommend you wanna do is you want to go through and run your time shift and make a system snapshot. This is so that in the event there is any issue, then you can actually go back. We're not going to do this simply because this is a virtual machine. I only have, I think there's either eight or 20, I think there's maybe 20 gigs. I don't know how much space is on this. I think it's 20 gigs on this. I need 20, uh, uh, 19.2 gigabytes of free space just to run time shift. So I'm not gonna run time shift. What I would do anyway, personally, is I just make a, um, I just make a backup of all of my files and that's generally what I prefer, but definitely consider that. Now the next thing they want you to do is upgrade any of your, um, any of your uh, applets, spices, any of these types of things. That's not the system I was looking for. I was looking for system settings. Um, so just make sure that if you go into these, just make sure that if there's any updates or anything, um, I don't even, like I said, I don't even really use these. So I'm not exactly sure where all the updating stuff is. Now, the next thing we're going to do is you want to make sure that you can actually access the, uh, the update. So if I go under my view, we can see here in, even under edit, I think it's under edit on this one. You'll see here that we don't have the option. This is because we need to get the latest mint upgrade info. So we're going to go ahead and install this update. And then this guy, once this guy runs its update, then the option to upgrade our system is going to appear in the, uh, in the menus. All right. So now we're reloading it. It's refreshing our list. So it looks like we have a few different options here. We have new Linux kernels. We have a new version of Sigil. And under here, under our edit menu, we now have the option to upgrade. So I'm actually gonna push these upgrades first, and then we're gonna go ahead and run, run the system. These should not take too long. Now we're gonna be upgrading some Linux kernels here. It may or may not wanna reboot the system. We're not gonna worry about that right this second. You might want to, um, I don't think it's really gonna make it any difference one way or the other. It's just the difference is we're gonna keep running on the old kernel until we reboot the system anyway. And updating is not going to cause a system reboot until after the upgrade process is over. So we don't really have to do that. It's just if you need to, you can do that. Why might you need to? Well, if you're using some of the best, some of the newest hardware, the Linux 5 kernel is going to be what you're going to want to run. In this system here, there's nothing that's super fancy or super brand new in this system. And so uh, I'm not worried about it. All right, so all my changes are applied. So that is these upgrades. We're going a new up-to-date system. Now it says our system is up-to-date. Now we're gonna go under our edit menu and upgrade to Linux Mint 19.2. Now, hopefully we have enough disk space to actually run the update. I honestly don't know if we will, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this is just a virtual machine. I never really built this machine with the intention of having to update it. So we'll see what happens. All right, so we can actually read the release notes for the system. We can look at the new features in the system. And now it's uh, providing bug fixes and new features. Upgrading always uh, represents a risk. Your data is safe. New issues can potentially affect your operating system. One other thing I'll mention, if you are new to Linux and you're running the upgrade, even if your system messes up, you can always take the hard drive out of your computer, attach it with an external uh, an external system on any other Linux device and still get all your data. Um, you are still going to be able to access your data even if there is an issue. You just want to make sure you have every safeguard in place. Make sure your system is can be restored. Make sure all of your data is restored. Never go into one of these without having uh, without having backups of all of your data. <clears throat> Enter my super secret password that is definitely not mint. And now we are going to be downloading information. So you can actually see what it's doing by clicking the, the rate over here. So it's actually working pretty quick, which is good. And now we are playing the waiting game. Now, some people say this will take as little as three minutes, as many as 10 or 15 minutes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of let it do its thing and we will come back when this is done or when there is another prompt screen. All right, so that actually took only about three or four minutes on, uh, this is a virtual machine. 
All right, so now we're going to hit close, and the next thing we need to do is we need to reboot the system. So we're just gonna go ahead, hit my shut, and restart the system. And uh, as soon as this is back on, we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, so here we are back on our loading screen. Of course, I gotta come over here and type in my super secret password that is definitely not mint. Ooh, I thought it was playing hip hop right for a second. You know. All right, all right. So now we are booted on. Everything looks pretty good. Let's um, let's look at our system info real quick. So now we are running Linux Mint 19.2 Cinnamon. We're running the Linux kernel 5.0. And let's see. So now there's a new version of the Linux kernel 4.15. I don't really need to upgrade that one. No. In fact, one of the new things that we have with this is we actually have the ability to remove some of the older kernels. So if I don't want to um, be using this, um, I can actually remove any of these old kernels. So it's installed, unsupported. So we're running this one here. So see for 19 we'll just go ahead and remove that one removing a lot of your old kernels will save up space because this is a virtual machine so uh, we can actually remove this one as well probably well I might keep the 415 on there just in case there's any issues but all right, so the next things we're gonna do, let's just go ahead and grab the things they told us to remove. I'm gonna show you how to how to remove those packages in case you're new to Linux and you're a little intimidated by the, the terminal. Um, but they said to remove some of the packages that are no longer supported. So we're gonna just boot up our Firefox here and land on the Linux Mint page because that should be the default. And we're just gonna grab this little script down here. Now, um, be very careful anytime you're running anything that you just copy from online. Uh, this is from the developer. So what this is doing is we're doing apt, which is going to be our package manager. Remove is going to be removing and then purge is getting rid of like all the traces. And all we're doing is removing this list of packages because they're no longer being used by Linux Mint. Um, we have to wait for this to be done, which it is. So we're going to boot up a terminal. Now what they gave us there was just apt. Um, that's actually gonna throw an error if we do that. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, oh, really? It should have thrown me an error because I did not do sudo apt. Okay, well, um, I guess it's not. Oh well, maybe something has changed. That's actually a little frightening because if I do, unless I have my system set. Uh, That's interesting. I'm not using sudo. I'm a little concerned about that. Is that something new? Did I miss something? Anyway, so now of course we've already rebooted our system, uh, so we're good there. So now our system is running Linux Mint 19.2. Um, of course by popular request, one of the, the greatest things they asked for is the ability to adjust manually adjust your scroll bars so now we can actually have custom sized scroll bars now these will apply once we re uh, restart cinnamon so you'll see here now we have scroll bars if you want big scroll bars you can do big scroll bars so you have that option as well you can also do really tiny scroll bars and if you just toggle this guy off then they go back to normal all right, so you can actually go there into your system settings. Um, other things, we, we actually already looked at the, the ability to remove the kernel is new. And um, there's a few other under the hood uh, changes and adjustments as well. Overall, what's my general recommendation? Should you upgrade to Linux Mint 19.2? I think if you're running any of the 19 branches, it's worth upgrading to Linux Mint 19.2. Now I'm keeping my production systems at uh, at 18.3 for now, just because I like the Ubuntu 16.04 LTS more than the 18.04 LTS at this point in time. Um, and we still have support until, I believe it's 2021 with the Linux Mint 18 branch. 
So what I'll probably end up doing is I'm going to be upgrading my traveling Linux Mint computer to this first and testing that around and every, everything there goes smoothly, then I will attempt to do an upgrade on this. Or I'll just buy a new hard drive, port it over, keep the old hard drive, and upgrade a new one just to see if everything works right without any potential complications. So that's my recommendation. If you are running Linux Mint 19, 19.0, or 19.1, upgrading to 19.2 is going to get you a lot of great benefits. It's going to get you um, some better Linux kernels. It's going to get you some more functionality in the system newer packages, and some extra features that I think are, are definitely worth having. They also are keeping the system a little bit more streamlined as well. So if I pull up the system monitor, um, let's see, where's our resources at? So yeah, we're using 1.1 gigs, but we have been uh, doing a few things on it as well. So with that being said, uh, let me know your thoughts and your comments down below.